Hi guys, Ray here from City Fan TV. Hope you're all doing very well. I'm still here in beautiful Northern Ireland. It really is. A bit windy, but uh, it's uh, been a nice sunny day. I think I'm talking to Bernard this morning, it's a bit better than it is in Manchester right now. Uh, still got another few days to go. I'll be back uh, in Manchester on Sunday, hopefully. This is a, a video kind of in response to uh, some worries, especially from City fans, as uh, to why we're struggling, why we are struggling big time against uh, opposition at the moment. You know, we've seen right now, it's, we're getting towards the business end of the season. We've seen Liverpool pumping teams, you know, another win last night against um, uh, Luton. We've seen Arsenal, apart from their uh, loss against Porto in the Champions League, but in the league, they're pumping teams. You know, 6 0 at West Ham, 5 0 against Burnley. Wow, you know, they're, they're both raking in the goals. We're struggling, we struggle to beat Brentford, and, and in all honesty, well, we had a few chances, but Brentford had chances as well. You know, they could have they could have easily won or drawn that game. And pre previous to that was Chelsea struggled again, again. We could have won that. We could have lost it. So the worry is we are really, really struggling in games. We're leaving teams in games for uh, very long periods. You know, the, you know, we're scoring late on and we're, we're staggering home like a drunk after last orders on his way home from the pub. We're, we're managing to get to the door and get the key eventually in and we're managing to flop inside our own house. Basically, we, we're struggling, but we're managing to generally win games. I, and I said to Bernard this morning, I said, if we win the league this season, this will be one of our greatest achievements. It, in my opinion, it really would be one of our greatest achievements, you know, because it's so difficult. We're not as good as a team as we were before. Um, and it's a huge struggle. And we're, we really are fighting to get over the line. Now, there are many reasons behind what's going on. I, I believe there's a, you know, and it's not just our own fault. Um, we're seeing teams try even harder to beat us. <laughs> and you think to yourself, well, is that possible? Because, you know, they were trying really hard to beat us when we were champions or uh, we'd won back-to-back -back league titles. Now we're trouble winners. You know, they tried any harder. I, I really do believe teams are trying even harder to beat us. They're setting up very, very defensively, a lot of players behind the ball, relying on either our mistakes uh, or a bit of luck, you know, relying on maybe uh, long balls or early passes, as Liverpool call them, long balls to get uh, over the top or behind our defenders uh, because we are pushing up out wide. You know, we saw again against Brentford Walker struggling to get back to uh, his man because he'd been pushing up once the ball was played through. Um, I felt they should have really done better than just tap it to uh, uh, Edison. So teams are playing ultra defensively, relying on you know dead ball situations, corners and free kicks and long throw-ins and uh, breaks using their fast plays. It's as simple as that. Uh, and that's tough. It's tough for us to break down teams where you've got seven or eight men behind the ball. Teams that are playing very narrow. And so, so there's that element. There's that element. And it does. It's, for me, it's turgid football. Because you've got teams that are playing very narrow. We're trying to get behind them, which is what we normally do. We're struggling, you know, trying to get behind them and do the cutback or hit the ball across the six yard box. We're struggling. We're struggling big time with that at the moment. Um, and then we're putting some lousy crosses in for no one to ha have a chance of heading that ball. You know, you, you, know, you put a, a cross in and when your forwards are Haaland, all right, he's got the height. And your attacking players are Bernardo Silva, Doku, uh, Oscar Bob, Phil Foden. <laughs> Where's the height? This, you know, so we're putting 
in my opinion, some useless balls in. Um, but that's because teams are forcing us to play down the wide. We're happy; they're happy for us to play down, down uh, the you know the full width of the pitch because they know they flood the box. Uh, you know, someone's got the ball out wide. They put two men on them and six, seven defenders in the box uh, for for the lousy cross that unfortunately it tends to come in. So that's how teams are setting up against us and and also it's the way it's a big frustration for me it's the way Pepper's set up now Pepper set up won't get knocked down here the van's coming out They're pretty fast these are 60 mile an hour roads so <laughs> that can come down pretty fast it's the way Pep sets up now we've been playing a lot this season with our wide men have been Kyle Walker and Josco Gvardio now as much as you might like them um, we, you know, we end up pushing these guys forward. Now, Gavardio on the left, he's not going to take people on. He's our wide man. We've got, we've had wingers playing. And I remember there's a game a few games back. Oscar Bob was playing inside Gavardio, or you know, Doku's inside Gavardio. Gavardio is your widest man, and sometimes you're furthest forward on the left. And he's not going to take anybody on. He's just going to get the ball, gets it, controls it, recycles it, just passes it, but usually backwards or sideways. Okay. That's just go Gavardio. Walker, or, uh, uh, yes, he's got a bit more pace, but he's doing something very, very similar on the right. You saw against Brentford, uh, I think in the first 15 minutes, he put three absolutely dreadful crosses in. So these are the guys you're looking for width. You know, you're looking for the overlaps with these guys. Didn't, you know, if they could put good crosses in, if we had good... Uh, tall players for the high crosses then I say yes you can see the validity I can see that just there's some justification in doing that but I, I can't see it you know um, and other players have gone off the ball obviously Jack's injured now Doku's gone a bit off the ball I don't think his decision making is as good as it was before he got his injury obviously Harlan's had that injury so it is I hate this ticky tacky football with no end products because we pass the ball around a lot looking for this mistake and the opening from the defenders it tends to come in the second half when they're tired but it's not it's not an for me anyway an enjoyable uh, brand of football when we're playing it around slowly and you know so many times i see us on the break slow it down give the opposition a chance a chance to regroup and get all the players behind the ball and we're back to tippy tappy around you know some good pa pa passages of passing play around the edge of an opponent's box but what tends to happen is you lose the ball and the team break on you and it happens against uh, Brentford, Chelsea the same, it happens too often, you know, you can be get it right 95% of the time, but the 5% of the time you get it wrong, that's when you're in danger, when you got uh, Gavadjol or whoever's on the left pushed up, when you got Walker pushed up on the right, lose that ball, you got no pace at the back, you know, Diaz and Stones ain't going to give you that pace, uh, Akanji neither, and then teams can pop the ball through and then you know you're relying on uh poor finishing good goalkeeping or whatever but another thing about this ticky tacky uh, tip ticky tacky tippy tappy football it really works if you're clinical with your finishing we are missing far too many chances i said that all season long we're missing too many chances especially early in games take the brentford game for example okay they've got so many men behind the ball bernardo should have scored with his header he should have scored, okay? Not just hit the target, should have scored. Simple as that. He scores that goal in the first half, the game changes. Brentford have to change because if they want something from the game, they're going to have to change. Now, they might stay playing the same way till 60, 65 minutes and then change, but they're going to have to open up. They're going to have to be more, um, I won't say aggressive, but they're going to have to be more creative. They're going to have to do something different if they want to score, okay? And once you're playing a little bit more open, that's going to give us more opportunities. They're going to have to push more, more men forwards. They're going to have to press us even harder, whoever the team is, okay? They're going to have to change from, you know, eight men behind the ball to six or seven men behind the ball. They have to change it up. That change up gives us more space. You saw against, I'll go back to that Brentford game, once we were 1-0 up and they were chasing it, we just passed it around them most of the time. You know, it was so comfortable. And 
if that can happen earlier you know in the first half for instance we take the opportunity to score a goal after 30 minutes or 40 minutes whatever 20 minutes they have to change their style their strategy their plans their approach and we should be looking to take advantage and that's what happens with you know Liverpool and Arsenal are currently doing that we're not doing that uh, as I said this combination of things and some of it you know I blame Pep I've got to blame Pep because he's trying something and look this by next season this might be brilliant you know this idea of pushing a Kanji forward or uh, using Guardiola as your uh, attacking player on the left next season they might be better at what they're doing and it might work really well at the moment for me it's not working and I do don't like looking back too much but I said it at the start of the season before the start of the season we're going to miss good one more than people think and you put pop it in your head Gunduan is possibly, you know, you could put, have the same team, but just one different play instead of Gunduan. You, we might be having a Kovacic or a Doku starting for argument's sake. Okay, we might have one play different, and the team has lost so much control by not having Gunduan around, and that's just control on the pitch. You know, with his uh, calmness and his influence and his captaincy and his leadership and everything else, it's a big impact. But you know. It's a really, it's going to be a really tough last 13 games of the season. For me, uh, the trophy I want the most is that league title. Winning four on the bikes, no one's ever done that. And that's number one for me. Number two is that Champions League. Number three is the FA Cup. You know, as I'm talking to Bernard, he doesn't care about the FA Cup. Well, I think that's a, all right, that's a, probably the wrong words to use. But, you know, if we go out, we can focus on the other competitions, you know, uh, don't worry about what's going on but we've got some really tough games coming up Bernard from this morning we haven't beaten anybody in the top six you know we've got games this season to play against Arsenal Spurs Liverpool Aston Villa uh, Man United next weekend in the derby so a lot of uh, important games coming up and the unfortunate thing is I've said it before uh, this season um, we've been lucky against teams who haven't had the quality, haven't been clinical enough. You know, Brentford could have be, could have easily beaten us at, at, um, at the weekend. And better teams have better quality, uh, and they'll they'll finish more chances. So it's going to be that's one of the reasons we haven't beaten these top teams. It's really really tough. Um, but we're we're plodding on. We're still there, and I think that's quite remarkable. It's a bit funny this season because we won the first six league games, but we've had so many draws, especially at Fortress Etihad, which you wouldn't expect. We've drawn with Liverpool at home when we, sh we sh really should have beaten them. We've drawn with uh, Spurs at home when we should have beaten them. We've drawn with Palace at home when we should have beaten them. We've drawn with Chelsea at home when I think we should have beaten them. Too many draws, but it's a tough all season. A lot's changed. I think, and I hope, and I expect us to be much better next season once uh, everybody's bedded in and possibly got one or two more players uh, to challenge some of the incumbents because uh, we need that. You know, uh, f a good example is when Rodri wasn't there, Calvin Phillips couldn't get in the tie because we weren't good enough. You know, so we need a Rodri esque type player and we haven't got a, a backup. You know, so you know, hopefully we'll address that issue in the summer. Last season, we could have put Gundogan there. We, we were confident about that. We could have done that. Um, okay, he's not a Rodriguez player, but he's got the quality and experience uh, and to, 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 to cover up for, for argument's sake, his deficiencies in that Rodri uh, role. Uh, but we play a slightly different way and it works. But I, I'd like to think next season, you know, KDB will be fully fit. Everybody you know, will have more fit players, we'll have slightly better players. We'll have players with more experience and we will come good. But I want us to come good this season because, as I said, if we win that league title, no one, I don't believe in my lifetime, is ever going to come close to winning four league titles on the backs ever again. Guys, if you use the channel, it would be fantastic if you could